Hello, uh, my name is Lawrence Yoon, uh, Chief Economist with National Association of Realtors. And certainly the market condition has changed. And uh, thank you, uh, Buck County uh, Association of Realtors for inviting me to share some of my thoughts about this transitioning market and possibly what to expect in 2023. I am recording this on the 11th. I know you have your meeting on the 12th. I thought I could be there live, but unfortunately, I am in Chicago. Uh, my office will be in DC, but I've been called to Chicago for a management meeting. I cannot do it live, and therefore I am doing this uh, recording on Tuesday uh, afternoon. So I think all the data should be all fresh because the few hours between now and when you go live uh, is just a minuscule number of hours. But nonetheless, uh, the market, as you know, is undergoing change because of the rising mortgage rates, much higher now than before. And it's a rapid rise. We have never seen mortgage rates rise this fast in such a short duration of time. We have to go all the way go back to the early 1980s when the Federal Reserve began to crank up interest rates. Uh, and at that time, Mortgage rate increase from you know, under uh, 8% to quickly to 18% uh, within a short span of time. I mean, thank goodness we don't have 18% mortgage rate. Today, we are talking about 7% mortgage rates, but it is nonetheless much higher than 3% rates of the prior two years. So what to expect given the current conditions? I'm going to put the PowerPoint slide up and I will go from there. So bear with me as I upload the PowerPoint onto the screen. So here we are. So let's first look at the mortgage rates. So this is mortgage rates from 1990 onwards. As you can see, the trend has been generally downward sloping. But now you see this year, it is rapidly rising. I put that three red bar to indicate something called resistance point. This is a Wall Street terminology. People who trade, buy and sell stocks, work in Wall Street, bond market, mortgage market. There's something called resistance point or technical analysis. And the way it works is that somehow the line begins to hit this resistance. And then it begins to retreat and try to hit it again. But once it bursts through, crack through this resistance point, then it begins to make a huge gain until the next resistance point. One can almost think of this as a battle line between two armies, back and forth. But once the line is broken, there's a huge advance until the next resistance line. So what happened here is that mortgage rate was 3% in the past two years. This year it began to rise and then it just burst through that first resistance. I mean, it just, just nonstop burst through. Today it is hitting the second resistance point at roughly 7% mortgage rates. Somehow if it burst through, cracked through the second resistance, one may be looking at 8.5% mortgage rate. So that will be the third resistance line point. So what I am hoping for, and what I believe is that we will stick at the second resistance point. So it's gonna try to hit that 7% or maybe hit 7%. Then maybe it's gonna retreat back somewhat before trying again at 7% and bounce back and forth. So the 7% mortgage rate could be the new normal. Every morning, one of the first thing that I do is look at the financial market data and look at 10-year treasury yields. This is the interest rate that the US government would pay to borrow money. So government is running a deficit, as you know, they spend more than what they collect in tax revenue. Tax revenues are record high, but government spending is run higher than that. We have to understand there is no free lunch. So when government spends money, they are borrowing money. And when they borrow, they have to pay interest. 
And that interest rate is the blue line, 10 year treasury yield. And the red line is the mortgage rate. One thing to note on this graph is that two lines move almost in a synchronized pattern. Sometimes the gap is a little larger than normal, and today it is, but you can see it moves very similarly. So because the US government borrowing rate is rising, it's pushing up the mortgage rate, but as before, the 10-year treasury is also hitting the, uh, the resistance point, and let's hope that it sort of reached that and begins to pull back and then bounce around this new normal. We don't want to see a bursting out of that second resistance and going up uh, because mortgage rate, I mean, you are talking about eight and a half percent mortgage rate, something that we clearly do not want to see. As to the housing market, the uh, pending contracts has been steadily trending down from early part of this year. The red line is essentially pre-pandemic home sales activity. So the early months of the lockdown, it really declined. And Pennsylvania, you had a very long lockdown compared to other states. Uh, but once the economy was reopened, home sales bursted out and went above the red line, went above the pre-pandemic, and you had a two years of very solid activity until this year. This year, because of rising mortgage rates, you see a steady decline in pending contracts. Roughly speaking, nationwide, it is down about 25%. In your local area, this data is from Bright MLS. Bright MLS ranks out very interesting, detailed data. I encourage you to visit. But what it shows is that the Pennsylvania or the eastern, the, the south eastern section of Pennsylvania, the close activity compared to one year ago is down 17.8%, but the contract signing is down even more, 27%, while the new listings is not popping out, which means a tough business opportunity for you. So there are fewer buyers, but also the sellers are not popping out because many sellers are loving their 3% mortgage rates, which they refinance into, or your recent clients uh, locked in those rates and they don't wanna give that up. So new listings are hard to come by, it's down. Uh, so overall condition is fewer buyers and fewer sellers. Now look at the last line also, the number of showing as reflected in the lockbox. So lockbox is also indicating very few showings currently than before. The inventory of the home is the meantime, the overall inventory, even though it is low, it is beginning to rise somewhat because the buyers are not grabbing immediately. But this chart is very useful for potential clients that you have who begins to say, I saw on the news that home prices will crash. And your response to that is this chart. This shows how many inventories are out there. The blue bar line is year 2000, when things were very normal. The middle of the graph, you see a huge inventory. That was in 2007, 2008 period. We had a foreclosure crisis and prices did decline 30%. But given that current inventory level is only one third or one quarter of that, the prospect of a major price decline is non-existent. Minor price decline? Certainly it's possible. The going down 5%, yes. Going up 5%, possible, yes. So I'm not sure which way it would go given the weakness in demand, but we also don't have enough inventory. I just don't see how we could get 30% price decline. So some pullback in prices is possible. And maybe this is a buying opportunity for some people who are priced out. Uh, but at the same time, it's easily possible for prices to rise 5%, especially in the greater Philadelphia or greater Trenton region, uh, just because home prices are relatively affordable compared to nearby big cities, whether it is New York City, Washington, or say, uh, you know, all of New Jersey is quite expensive. Uh, so 
uh, given that affordable condition or relatively speaking, uh, that things are in better shape uh, in terms of supporting home prices. Now let's look at the number of distressed property sales. Again, back in 2010, when we had the major plunge in prices, uh, about 40% of the homes were either foreclosed or needing a short sale approval. But today it is virtually non-existent, historically low. Your recent clients are smiling big. They are locked in at those low interest rates and they have seen prices rise, which is their housing wealth. So they are smiling big. Maybe you wanna recontact them, them because you wanna associate their positive experience uh, with you so that uh, when they refer, make a recommendation about their next client, they can refer their friends and colleagues to you. If they are happy, no distress in the market. Home prices in the meantime in the greater Philadelphia and Trenton region looks like this. Uh, I'm not sure which one is which, well, you know, which one is Philadelphia or which one is uh, Trenton. I think Trenton is blue, uh, Philadelphia is green, but roughly moving similarly. Uh, so the median price is surpassing 300,000, uh, much higher than what it was during the prior bubble condition, but that's you know, almost uh, more than a decade ago. And in the meantime, people's income has been rising and the interest rate which they purchase at 3% is much, much lower uh, condition. So home prices, again, on very solid ground, even though there is a possibility of 5% price decline or even 5% price increase. Again, I don't know which way it would go, uh, but not a 30% price decline, nor 30% price increase. Prices will not increase 30% when we have this rising interest rate condition. Now let's look at what realtors across the country are doing with their listings. Surprisingly, about half of the home, 51% of the homes are currently being sold at list price or slightly above. But 49% of the homes are shaving from list price. And to illustrate this, focus on the last column, 4.6%, 5.2% and down the line. And this is related to the days on the market. So what does this mean? For those home, which is about half, which gives some price concession, if the home was sold within first week, meaning contract, ratified contract, and closing happens you know, 30 days or 45 days later, but contract signing was done within the first week, price negotiation was about 4.6%. If the days on the market was 30 days, price negotiation was 6.8%. If the days on the market was 120 days, price negotiation ended up being 14.9%. So longer the days on the market, larger price discount. We know it intuitively. Maybe we did not know the figure, but this is what the realtors across the country are doing in order to get the closing done. The other column shows a little different numbers. The uh, middle column, the pending listing shows the price concession, little not as severe as the sole listings. And it could be just that once you have dependent contracts and it is still pending, it's not closed yet. Uh, and maybe there's a home inspection. And through home inspection nowadays, they are finding 101 things wrong with your house and therefore they wanna do additional price negotiation. So pending does not mean celebration. It means a further potential price uh, negotiation. And the first column uh, is active listing without even a contract signing. And you see the numbers are much lower and maybe because price discount is not significant enough, uh, they're not getting contracts. Uh, but something that realtors across the countries are doing, something that you may want to be aware of. Of course, all neighborhood is different and you have to look at your neighborhood uh, comps, metrics, and other factors. Let me tell, turn to the broader economy. Economy is in a recession, I believe, because we are experiencing a two straight quarters of GDP decline, which would be a unofficial definition of a recession. 
I wish this was the official definition because I already have the data speak rather than a committee. Committee expressing their opinion, voting, to me, that's too subjective. I'd much rather have a data to determine whether or not uh, we are in a recession. So uh, what this shows is that at the beginning, we had the lockdown GDP collapse, but reopening the economy brought the economy back. And then it was positive until early part of this year when it turned negative for two consecutive quarters. And one can say that is a recession. Now, if you look at the retirement account, you are definitely saying we are in a recession because stock market is undergoing a correction in a bear market. You saw a major evaporation of your stock market wealth retirement fund uh, condition. So by this metric, certainly we are in a recession. But one bizarre aspect is that we have more job openings as reflected in the blue line. Help one assign at the hotel, at the restaurants, at, uh, you know, there's a shortage of workers, truck drivers, uh, school bus drivers, nursing home. They're looking for workers at a nursing home. So help one assign in many, many places, even though number of people searching for a job in the orange line is below that. So this is a bizarre recession. Let me comment also. I would say we are in a housing recession. Certainly your income is not, uh, you know, trying to get that additional transaction is difficult. And there is a layoffs at the mortgage lending industry. Refinance business has totally collapsed. So if you are a mortgage broker, you got laid off and now you are not interested in finding a job at 7-Eleven. So it's gonna take some time to find that suitable job. So just because there is more job opening does not mean immediate hiring. Uh, there's a little friction in the marketplace. A job market overall is pretty much back to pre-pandemic. So the data is showing from early 2020, and when the pandemic came, 20 million job losses. But with each passing month, more job recovery, more job recovery, such that this September, we have more people working in America compared to pre-pandemic. But not every uh, the thing is right, because jobs are coming around and the wages are rising. I mean, historically, wages would rise about 3% a year. People who are receiving W-2 statements. I know many of you are on commission, so your income fluctuates violently. Sometimes very good, other times nothing for two months, three months. Uh, but people who are receiving steady income W-2 salaries, their wages typically would rise 3%. Now they're rising 5%, blue line, 5% a year, which is a little better than before. But it means nothing because people go to grocery store and at gas station, consumer prices are rising by 8%. So any wage gain is being completely wiped away by higher consumer prices. So not a good news. Now for social security recipients, I guess you are cost of living from next year will rise roughly 8%. So you will be protected from this rising inflation, but overall wages are rising uh, below the amount of the consumer price inflation. Also the job market is not all equal across the country. Pennsylvania is showing minus 1.0. So what does minus 1.0 mean? It means there are 1.0% fewer jobs in Pennsylvania compared to March 2020, right before COVID. I mentioned nationwide, we are back to normal. In fact, some states like Florida, right before hurricane, 5.0, meaning 5.0% more jobs in Florida now compared to pre-COVID, again, right before a hurricane. Texas, 4.9% more jobs. Carolina is doing well, but Pennsylvania is negative. New York is negative. Well, New Jersey is actually positive, plus 1.1%. But there is a variation across the country. Now, the greater Philadelphia market, I know the Buck County, are you in Trenton or Philadelphia? I mean, you can say, you know, there's some workers going either way. But overall jobs over the past 20 years from the turn of the century, 
in year 2000 shows the following. So flat line until right before COVID when there was consistent job gains, then COVID knocked it out. Now trying to recover almost back to prior pre-COVID days, but not yet. By the way, for Philly span, congratulations. Uh, and let's see how things uh, show during the playoffs. Uh, but you know, Philly fans, they are very loyal fans that I know. I'm from Washington, DC. When I go see the National versus Phillies, I see a huge section of the Phillies fan uh, watching the in Washington, DC, watching the ball game. So congratulations on the uh, playoff uh, uh, games. In Trenton, it is actually a steady upward trend. So Trenton is much smaller market compared to Philadelphia market, but at least it's steadily increasing. And you can see towards the end, COVID lockdown, recovering, and essentially a little bit above pre-COVID days in terms of total job. Jobs will be very important, especially in light of the fact that mortgage rates are rising, or at least we are not going to see any significant decline in mortgage rates. Now, bad news. Consumers are not feeling good about the economy, according to University of Michigan, consumer sentiment index. People are saying economy stinks. Maybe the stock market portfolio or the only job openings are of low wage job openings. Uh, and just people are just not feeling good. You know, grocery store, things are very expensive. Uh, and what about the housing market? It looks even awful. This is a Fannie Mae survey. A very simple question. Is it a good time to buy? It's a very simple question. And look how it is sinking and sinking. So you have your buyers, but only consolation on this chart is that what people say and what people do do not necessarily match up all the time. Look at the graph at the beginning in 2020 and 2021. No increase in sentiment. Yet we know that home sales surge because conditions were right. So it is possible that people may say they don't wanna buy, but somehow mortgage rate retreats back down, some inventory show up, maybe they will jump at the chance, but at least the sentiment is not good. One thing that you may want to explain to your clients is the following. Mortgage rates are high, 7%. So let's say a person takes out a $350,000 mortgage. Uh, which may be a typical mortgage amount at 7%. Monthly payment, principal and interest only, not the property tax and others, just principal and interest, is $2,329. And that is a fixed payment. So one year after the other, it goes down. But let's say somebody earns $80,000 a year and their monthly salary would translate into $6,667. Again, for $80,000 an annual salary income, W-2 income salary. Given there is an inflation, wages may be rising along with inflation. Remember social security recipients, they're getting essentially the same. Uh, workers, not as much, but let's say it's still following some level of inflation. It means their salary will be rising. So as their salary rises over time, the amount of money dedicated for mortgage payment steadily declines. And maybe this is one of the big reasons why people build wealth by becoming homeowners. But let's say the opposite. Let's say for whatever reason, inflation begins to really calm down. So inflation goes back to 2%, people's wages rise only two or 3%, then what happens? Well, if that's the case, mortgage rate will not be 7%, but it will be more like 5%. In that case, people will refinance. So rather than paying 23, 29, they will have lower payment in the future. I mean, there is a transaction cost to refinance. So either way, uh, the homeowner will be in good position. So please relay this type of information to potential buyers because I know that some people are completely priced out because of higher mortgage rates, but then there are some people who do have the financial capacity, but they don't want to jump. They don't want to take a chance. They are waiting for the prices to decline 30%. It's not gonna collapse by 30%. So show the inventory chart, show this chart and see how they make decision. And if they don't budge, even after this explanation, 
you should mention, what do you think is going to happen to rent? Because we know that the rents are rising and they quickly change their mindset once you remind them of what's happening on the rental side. My final four ch chart is the forecast chart. So 2019 was an uneventful year in hindsight before COVID. No increase in sales, prices increased modestly. But 2020 was a good year, 2021 even better. But this year is transition. First quarter was decent, second quarter declining, third quarter looks ugly, fourth quarter looks ugly. So combining all this, unit sale looks to be down about 15% for the year. But the prices will be up, up roughly 10% from one year ago. So therefore, dollar revenue will be down about 5%. Next year, I think there's slightly additional declines. Then the prices, I really don't see it declining. Again, I don't know if it's going to be minus five or plus five. My model is saying plus one. So after two years of a double digit growth, you will encounter roughly a one single percentage point decline. This is on the aggregate. Individual basis, I know that some realtors still have a fantastic year, even during a recession. And then you have some realtors who struggle even during the good years. So it varies, it's a super competitive market out there and best wishes uh, in all the activities that you do. So thank you very much for having me. Uh, and again, best to you all.